All right, today we're going to be talking about um, using our graffiti doodle project and working with the magic wand tool to start off with. All right, there's a lot of reasons that we use, or uh, that we've isolated these um, lines. And one of the things that I like to use a lot when I'm doing this is using the magic wand tool. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to um, select or, or color the inside of my stars. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go, I can select this area because I have this good strong outlines layer. I can select that layer and if you look at it, that area is now selected. I'm just toggling the visibility. But what the problem is, if you look really close and say I go ahead and I fill it in, it's hitting the edges but there's we forgot and we understand that also the edges are not quite right. All right, the edges may have some black in there or something else. Um, what a, a one way to kind of take care of that, and I've done this before, is I'll take my outlines layer, go to uh, image adjustments, and I'm putting an adjustment directly onto this. Going to hue and saturation, and it takes all the pixels that are in this layer. So if I zoom in, as we can see, some of these pixels are gray and stuff like that. I can just go to my hue and saturation image adjustments. Where's my hue and saturation? Oh, it's over here. Sorry, that panel. Hue and saturation, and just go all the way to the lightness down to black. All right, down to black. You see that some of these things, this might be a transparent pixel for some reason. All right, so I can't quite affect those that well, but I can take all those ones that were had a, had a gray tone on them and just throw them all to black. All right, again. Back out here, I'm going to select these interior. I'm going to hold shift. And you see that plus sign show up? Now I'm selecting all the interiors of the stars. All right. I've now selected the interiors of the stars. And now I'm going to make a color layer. And I can do this many ways. I can go take my brush tool and I can color them in. All right. I noticed that my brush is set to dissolve. I'm going to set it to normal. The opacity is down. Increase the opacity and the flow. Um, if your brush is not moving quickly it may be because you have your smoothing up 100 percent see how slow that moves all right if you change your smoothing down to like 10 percent it could be a little bit better it fills it in faster now i've done this my other way to do this is by pressing the right bracket to make my brush really big and color it in fast that's one way to do it or i'm just going to press delete right now edit and fill Remember this, write this down, Shift F5, I use it all the time. I've made a selection, now I'm going to fill it. Shift F5, I can fill it with color, and that allows me to choose the color that I want to fill it with, in this case yellow, all right? I can change the blending mode of that, whatever I want to do. There's also some different things. You can fill it with the foreground color, the background color, that would be blue or red. Um, you, can change, you can fill it with pattern or just black, gray, and white. Um, right now I'm going to fill it with color. I chose yellow, press OK. Now I've got it filled in. Now if you'll notice, I'm going to press Control D, which is select, deselect. I don't need that selection anymore. I was in the color layer when I did that. I'm going to label this color. Zoom in a little bit. If I turn off the outlines, you can see it hit that edge pretty well. I'm okay. I feel good about it, but sometimes that's the magic wand tool does not do a good job of it. I prefer when I'm doing the magic wand, especially when I'm doing a color layer, is I'll select the areas I want to select. All right, and I will go to select, modify, and expand the selection. So watch what happens when I expand that selection. I'm going to expand it by like five for four pixels. I'm going to go five right now. And you see what it does? Around the edges of that selection, it can expand it in all directions around all the parts that I wanted to select. Now I go back down to color and I go to edit, fill with color. The color is already chosen. It should be, right? Yellow. Press OK. And now you will notice that the color is now D for, control D for deselect. It's getting sandwiched in there pretty well. All right, underneath that even. In fact, I'm going to take the outlines layer. I'm going to reduce its opacity slightly. And you can see where they're overlaying or where that outlines layer, it's, it's got, there's no, um, 
there's no edge to it. There's no ghosted edge. A lot of times when you just use the fill bucket, like a, some of you are doing the fill bucket, like you'll take the outlines layer, you've made a duplicate layer, and we'll call this, um, we'll just call it fill bucket layer. Increases opacity again. So some of you are doing this where you use the fill bucket, and you'll notice that the fill bucket isn't quite doing its job. Like here's the fill bucket. Um, I'm going to use a color. The color is going to be that yellow that I wanted to use. All right, when I'm using the fill bucket, now I did a good job of, of making a good hard edge, but you'll sometimes see it doesn't quite hit that. So what I will do, if you don't have a good hard edged brush or a hard edge, hit that fill bucket one more time. And it'll go beyond there. You see how it's kind of it's kind of jumping like two or three pixels beyond that. Um, if I have a brush and I've set the brush with a a low hardness, if my general brush is, maybe I just have a soft round brush. And then I use the fill bucket. Let me change that color to yellow again. Control Z, Control Z, Alt, Control Z, sorry. And I hit the fill bucket. You'll notice that because there's an edge around this softer brush, it doesn't hit that. So if I hit it again one more time, hit the fill bucket one more time, it's kind of jumping those gaps a little bit. All right, so that can do a good job of it, but still I need that overlaying um, outline on top. So be aware of it, play with it, understand how the fill bucket works. Um, and have a layer that is your fill bucket so that when you go back to your outlines layer and you sandwich it in, watch what happens. Now I've sandwiched it in, the opacity is 100%, so it's kind of making sure that the outline layers are doing what they're supposed to do. All right, what I would like you guys to do is, in a lot of cases, try to use your um, try to use your magic wand in the right way. In some cases, I may just do this. I'll select this area that I know that is not the stars, and I'll select the inverse of it. Select the inverse of the stars. All right, then I know it's also going to select this outside layer here, but the inverse of it is that yellow. If I fill that in, edit, fill, with that color that I chose, there it is, that yellow, oops, shouldn't have been in that layer, I should have been in my color layer, perhaps I'll make another color layer, color stars, and don't be afraid to make a bunch of layers, the more layers the better, okay, this will give you a lot more opportunity to move stuff around and do fun stuff with that, alright, again I'm going to go to Edit Fill, which is Shift F5 with that color. All right, and you can see what it did. But what, obviously, I, I hit everything else. I shouldn't have done everything else. Um, but you can see, if I zoom in, the color is actually going all the way to the edges. If I turn off the outline, the color is going all the way to the edges. All right, uh, again, I, so I turn off the outlines. And you can see now that that color is hitting all the way to the edges of there. Be aware of that. Practice it. Um, now that I've got that done, I'm be like, oh, Christ, I don't need the color going all the way over there. So I'll go back to my outlines layer, which is the, the good one, not the fill bucket layer. The outlines layer is my good one. And I'll go into the outlines here. Your outlines is what you're using to make selections from. Your outline stays put. It, you don't. Don't fill the, don't do a fill bucket on your outlines layer. Your outlines is your, I'm going to lock it actually, is the one that you're using to, um, as your source to get those um, edges, to get those selection areas. So now that I go into there, I've got the outlines layer. I'm going to go to the stars layer, and I'm going to delete that area. Say I don't need it in here, all right? I'm in that outlines layer. I don't need this area to be yellow. Go back down to my color. Boom. Outlines. Use it as your kind of your source material. Anyway, now that I've got these things done, say I want to add a, a texture in there or something else. If I've got my stars isolated, and I can do this too using my, um, my selection tool, my polygonal lasso tool. 
I like to do this a lot. It's just like a pen tool, but for selections. And when I get back to the beginning, and I'll do this, I kind of go outside here. Now I've made a selection, right? You can see that selection. When I go back into the color stars layer, I've made that selection. I'll just press delete, and I've deleted all the things that weren't or did all, delete all the things that were within that um, polygonal lasso tool. I'll go over that a little bit more later. Um, so I've got the colors, stars. It's the last thing I'm going to do on this video. I like to just have a duplicate real quick and then play with um, texture or filter it or something else. And this is what I want you guys to be showing off to me, is making a selection, making, changing that layer, adding some fun stuff to it. So here's my stars, right? Control minus, zoom out a little bit. Maybe I'd put stained glass on there or grain or crackleature, patchwork on there, change the square sizes, maybe the relief, or maybe I'd put a sketch layer on there. It looks fun, funky, weird. All right. If it's only one color, it doesn't do much. All right. All right. It also works off of the two colors in your um, foreground and background color. So if I cancel this and change this to black and white, or have it be a different color, and then I go to Filter, Filter Gallery, you can now see what it's doing. It's adding black to there. All right? It's adding some other things in the sketch. It does work off of black and white. So you can see that you've got that. And because the um, color is a flat color, You'll also notice that it's just one color. If I had had some shading in there or something else, it would have done something different. Now that I've got this fill created or this texture created, I can go back to the stars, turn on the stars color, and maybe have this set to multiply or overlay. All right? Now we're playing, we're learning, we're trying new things.